Now, Prince Charles and William came together today to help launch a powerful campaign to halt the rise in the illegal trade in endangered animals. But as they spoke about the threat to the destruction of rare species through poaching, they themselves faced charges of hypocrisy for taking part in a sport that campaigners say is linked to the death of iconic birds of prey like golden eagles and hen harriers. Cordelia Lynch has this report. It's a bird that you see gliding effortlessly across the mountains with the snow and the rocks in the background. And it fills you with wonder and takes your breath away. A bird that people will travel hundreds and hundreds of miles to come and see really does symbolise wild Scotland. Uh, I'm delighted that our foundation has been able to provide an impetus for the creation of the United for Wildlife. Today, Prince William campaigned to protect iconic species in Africa, fresh from shooting wild boar in Spain. But some animals in the UK are also being pushed to the brink. This area of the Angus Glens in, in the Eastern Highlands has seen an absolute catalogue of illegal killing of some of our most iconic birds of prey over the last few years. Golden eagles poisoned, white-tailed eagles poisoned, red kite buzzards shot, trapped and poisoned, a white-tailed eagle nest tree chopped down. This whole area is intensively managed for driven grouse shooting. Conservationists claim grouse shooting, the so-called sport of kings, is behind the killings. Whilst there is no suggestion Prince William has shot in any of the areas where birds of prey have died, it is a sport the future king knows well. The prince has often enjoyed a grouse shoot on holiday here at Balmoral, where the golden eagle is also often spotted. But as the Duke of Cambridge focuses on the animals being poached abroad, campaigners say he needs to look at the birds of prey being persecuted here at home. I think it's rather hypocritical of Prince William to be addressing what is a genuine concern about global wildlife criminal activity when he's actually not really addressing what's happening in areas where he's hunting in the UK, for example, where you're seeing the killing of a beautifully endangered species like the golden eagle. Balmoral is in Aberdeenshire, the front line of attacks. 31 birds, considered pests by some, were targeted in 2012, the second highest number in the UK. This is the latest victim poisoned in Angus Glen. Despite a recent decline, the Scottish Government say last year poisonings were on the rise. The ground here is used predominantly for uh, grouse moor shooting and just around the left hand side of the hill here is where Fearning was found poisoned. Logan Steele has been tracking birds with satellite technology. He believes landowners are instructing gamekeepers to attack them to inflate their red grouse population. It takes five years for an eagle to hatch to get to the stage of being able to breed. So although it's a loss of only one golden eagle, it does amount to significant impact on a breeding population in a tight geographical area such as this. Colin Gare was a gamekeeper for 40 years. He says he was never asked to kill birds, but knows one younger man who was pressurised by his employers. If you're a young man with a wife and family and living in a tied cottage, then you can be influenced. You can be lent on. 91 birds of prey were poisoned, shot or trapped in 2012. Four golden eagles were among them. In Scotland, their numbers are stable with around 440 pairs, but they no longer fly in England. Hen harriers, though, are far worse off, close to extinction. Last year, they failed to breed in England for the first time in 60 years. Are birds of prey an issue for you? Well, you can imagine an estate like this, it's like a larder for them and it attracts them from all over because it's a food source. And it's because of the management that all this food is here. The RSPB say 49 individuals, including six gamekeepers, were prosecuted for wild bird crimes in 2012. Yet Alex Hogg denies raptors are being deliberately targeted. We would dispute that. We would like a system where we could remove birds of prey from our grouse moors if they become a problem. But what if there's nowhere to move them to? Well, this is when it needs to be hard decisions need to be taken. If the population's too high all over the United Kingdom, it then needs to be taken whether that animal might need to be culled. We don't want to cull them. We'd rather the government done it. But that would be how the system might need to work. In Scotland, there have already been some new prosecuting laws introduced. 
why not just fully regulate the industry like other countries? We want to avoid putting in place something that might be seen as a draconian response or too restrictive response. I'm not saying we wouldn't, we wouldn't do this eventually. Prince William wants the world to stop illegal wildlife trafficking. But campaigners say his message will be stronger if he gives up hunting and helps protect a symbol of Scotland suffering on his own doorstep.